this video we're going to be looking at uh, reactions, double displacement reactions, this time though with acid-base reactions. We just looked at the precipitation reaction one. Uh, and so these are acid-base reactions, but they work very much the same way uh, as far as we're going to bring one of each cation over, swap the anions uh, with kind of one distinct difference or one major difference that you'll see as we go through these. So again, you want to have your periodic table handy, a list of polyatomic ions. I just put the three different polyatomic ions that we're going to be dealing with uh, down at the bottom here. So we've got those listed. Again, we've got our polyatomic ion, or uh, the periodic table rather, that has all the charges that we'll need uh, for this particular, uh, these particular examples. All right, so for double displacement reactions, again, we're going to bring one of each cation, one of each anion over, swap the anion, uh, anions between the cations to come up with our products, just like we did uh, in the previous video. So we're going to start with hydrogen, and that's really the unique thing with an acid-base reaction, how you identify an acid. It's typically going to start with hydrogen in the formula. So I've written all three of these with the acid written first. It doesn't have to be that way. You could switch any uh, either one of these. Uh, it's kind of like if you had 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2. They both equal 5, so it doesn't really matter uh, which order they are. It doesn't have to be the acid first. All right, so HCl is the acid, and then the base is typically going to be a metal with the hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion is one of our polyatomic ions. I wrote it down here. It's got a negative one charge. Here I have sodium with hydroxide. Here's potassium with hydroxide. Here's magnesium with two hydroxides. But those are our bases then, that metal hydroxide. All right, so let's go through this just like we did our other double displacement reactions. Start with one hydrogen and one sodium. We'll bring those over to the product side. So there's my hydrogen, and there's the sodium. And then we're going to swap the anion. So the OH group here, I'm going to put with the hydrogen. And the chlorine, we're going to put with the sodium over there uh, on the product side. Again, just like we've done for other double displacement reactions. Now, what you see here, again, when we just bring one of each of those, you're always going to have one of your products with these acid-base reactions as this HOH. Or you could also, of course, write that as H2O. Now, Unlike the precipitation reactions, you, you won't typically find a solid as one of your products. Instead, one of your products is usually going to be water. We don't write it in AQ. You can't have aqueous water. Aqueous water is water dissolved in water. It's all just water. Uh, and so we just instead put a little L behind that to indicate that that's a liquid. So again, we can do that either place. You can leave it HOH or you can leave it as H2O. One or the other is just fine there. Uh, for that. And that's balanced. Again, we can even balance the positive and negative charges with this. Hydrogen, it's in column one, like all of our other uh, alkali metals uh, in group one, has a plus one charge. And the hydroxide ion, that polyatomic ion, has a negative one charge. So just one of each of those, and that's balanced. We do need to balance the ionic compound that also results here. This is sodium with chlorine. Sodium's in column one, has a plus one charge. And chlorine in the second to last column has a negative one charge. Plus one and negative one. You don't need to do anything to that. That's already balanced. All right, and most of the time that's going to be aqueous. Uh, you can bring in your solubility rules just like we did with the precipitation reactions. Uh, but again, in this case, it's a sodium salt. And we know from our solubility rules, those are always going to be aqueous. All right, so if you haven't looked at the precipitation version of this, you can go back and take a look at that. That's where we use those solubility rules. But in this case, that comes out aqueous. And it turns out this reaction is completely balanced then. We have one hydrogen here, one hydrogen there. That's two hydrogens, which is balanced by the two in the water there. One chlorine, one chlorine, one sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, and one oxygen, either in this water or in that water. Again, we're just going to look at one of those uh, for that. So that equation is done. That one's balanced and finished. And we've predicted our products from that. All right, let's try the second one here. And again, just like we do with uh, the double displacement with the precipitation reactions, we're going to leave any subscripts behind unless it's a part of a polyatomic ion, like the 4 here in SO4, which is what we've got there. So that's going to stay in there, but this 2, we're going to leave that behind at least at first. All right, because you may not need it. That's why we leave that behind. So I'm just going to bring one of these two hydrogens over to the product side. Leave yourself some room there, and we'll bring over the potassium here. Then we're going to swap the anions here, so the OH group, just like we did up at the top there. That goes with the hydrogen, and the sulfate ion, SO4, goes over here with the potassium. Again, if you've got HOH, that's done. That's your liquid water. Plus one for the hydrogen, negative one for the hydroxide. Again, you could also write that as H2O. 
and then we'll use our, poly, or our periodic table here for potassium. It's in column one. It's a plus one. Sulfate ion, I wrote down here at the bottom of my list here uh, of SO4, it's got a negative two charge to that one. So again, you'll have your list of polytonic ions possibly, or your instructor might make you memorize those. And so you can see there, the charges do not balance each other out. And so we can crisscross that. I need one sulfate ion and two potassiums then for that. And so that gives me the formula K2SO4. Now we can go to balance the overall equation and um, I like to leave the, the hydrogens kind of to the end because they show up in a couple of different places. Uh, we could balance the sulfur here. There's one sulfur, one sulfur. Leave oxygen to the end because it shows up all over the place as well. There's one potassium here, but there's two potassiums on this side. So it looks like we need a two out in front of the KOH there. That'll give me two potassiums then. And then that gives me two hydrogens here plus the two hydrogens here. I've only, that's a total of four hydrogens on this side. I've only got two hydrogens there in the HOH, so we need a two out in front of that. That's going to give me two oxygens that aren't a part of sulfate, and there's two oxygens that aren't a part of the sulfate ion over there. Or you could just look at it as a total of six oxygens on both sides. All right. So that one's balanced. And uh, back to the solubility rules, potassium salts are always aqueous, so we can just put an AQ after that and that reaction is done as well. All right, let's try this last one. Once again, the only subscript we're gonna bring with it is the three that's a part of the nitrate ion. The two here outside the parentheses, we're gonna leave that behind. So let's bring one hydrogen over to the product side and one magnesium ion over to the product side. There's our two cations. The NO3, that whole thing's gonna to stay together. We're gonna to put that with the magnesium over here. and. There's two hydroxides. We're only going to bring one over to begin with because, again, that makes our water molecule there, the H2O or just HOH, and there's our uh, L after that to indicate that it's a liquid. All right, and then we need to balance the positive and negative charge here with magnesium. Back to your periodic table. Here's magnesium in column two. It's got a plus two charge for that one, and nitrate ion just has a negative one down at the bottom here. Uh, and so we need to crisscross that one, one magnesium, two nitrates for that. And so we'll put a subscript two there to balance that. That gives us a total of negative two to balance the plus two from the magnesium. Then to balance the equation, again, we'll lead, kind of do the hydrogens and oxygens last. I've got one magnesium, one magnesium. That's all set. I've got two nitrogens or two nitrates there. I've only got one nitrogen or one nitrate ion here. So we need a two in front of the HNO3. Uh, and that gives me two hydrogens here plus the two hydrogens in the OH group here, but I've only got, uh, it's a total of four once again here, but I only have two total on the product side. So we put a two out in front of that. That'll give us four total uh, hydrogens there to balance our four hydrogens on the reactant side. Two oxygens there, two oxygens there that aren't a part of the nitrate ions that we had earlier. And uh, magnesium nitrate, Nitrate salts, here's our solubility rules one more time. Nitrate salts, they're always aqueous. There's no exceptions to that. So magnesium nitrate, that also will be aqueous. So again, usually that salt will be aqueous, but doesn't have to be. So you do want to check those solubility rules. Sometimes they, they can trick you or try to trick you uh, by giving you a combination that gives you a salt that will precipitate out there. All right, and that's how we complete double displacement reactions that are acid-base reactions.